if my uh, higher uh, education institution um, goes ahead yeah, yeah. and uh, makes me one of the happiest people on planet Earth on Monday night, which owner is most likely to be the first one to reach out to Jim Harbaugh and congratulate him and ask him if he wants to talk on Tuesday, Tom? I would say let's start with this, Rich. Uh, Jim Harbaugh is in the middle of a very busy week, yes, as I'm sure you know. They flew back. I want to say they got back to Ann Arbor, I was told, like early Tuesday morning. And then they had to be on a plane to Texas like 48 hours later. So there is not a lot of time mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, uh, be able to think about other things. I, I mean, listen, I, I know that Jim certainly had given a lot of thought to the possibility of a return to the NFL. He waited two years ago with the Vikings. He waited last year with the Broncos. There were scenarios where he would have taken those jobs, they just didn't play out that way. And part of it seems to be, you know, the time that it was taking for him to get an offer from those teams. With the Vikings, they brought him in for a lengthy all-day second interview. And by the time he got back on the plane, he said, I'm going back to Michigan. And the Vikings really liked Kevin O'Connell, and they were moving forward on that anyway. With last year in Denver, they did a Zoom interview with him, which I was told went totally fine. You know, went well. They wanted to do an in-person. And I got the impression Jim's response to that was, why are we doing all these interviews? I'm Jim Harbaugh. You know what I've done in the NFL. You know what I've done in college. Like, am I your guy or not? If I'm not, then I'm going to I'm gonna go back to Michigan. And the Penners actually flew and saw him, sat in his living room in Ann Arbor, and still tried to pitch him uh, at one point uh, last January. All of which is to say, if Jim Harbaugh takes a job, I would anticipate – that it moves relatively swiftly here. There's a process in the NFL. There's the Rooney rule. You have to conduct multiple interviews with external minority candidates. If, go back to your original question, if there are owners calling him uh, very quickly in the hours after that game to say congratulations and, hey, there's a plane that you might recognize with our logo on it, <laughs> I think the one you would start with is the Raiders. Listen, Mark Davis is a big believer that you need a name in Vegas. He wants the name on the marquee. He wants to draw people in. That's, you know, what you got with John Gruden. That's what you got until you didn't get it with Josh McDaniels. Antonio Pierce, it's fair to say, has been really impressive in what he's done in terms of the fact that they've won games and they get the win over the Chiefs. And he's clearly got key players like Max Crosby and Devontae Adams taking every opportunity possible to speak up publicly in his favor. You know, if they get a win this week, Against the Broncos, that's another, you know, chip in in his stack in terms of getting the head coaching job. But is Antonio Pierce the name for Mark Davis? Uh, I, I would certainly say that Mark Davis is going to vet everything. Jim Harbaugh, as somebody who was an assistant coach for the Raiders, coming to a team that does have some superstar players in a high-profile media market, able to grab headlines. It would make a lot of sense. The second one I would mention would be the L.A. Chargers, uh, a team that, you know, I know that John Spano said in an interview recently, you know, that they would consider it a plus, I think he said, if somebody's got prior head coaching experience because they're coming off several head coaches, Mike McCoy, Anthony Lynn, Brandon Staley in a row, who are first timers, doesn't mean they're definitely going to go that route. But Jim Harbaugh coming in, knowing who his quarterback is going to be, there's surgery that needs to be done on that roster to get the cap right. They got older star players who are very expensive. There's going to be hard decisions you need to make on guys like Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler's a free agent, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack. There's a lot of things you have to figure out. But if you're the Chargers and you've spent your time as Stan Kroenke's tenant in that stadium and always grasping to try to, you know, be the team that's in the focus when you've got Sean McVay over there winning a Super Bowl and now leading another playoff team with a, a total rebuild on uh, you know on both sides of the football here. Jim Harbaugh is the type of guy who suddenly is going to become the focus within the NFL. I, I would anticipate everybody who's got a vacancy or might have a vacancy is at least weighing the possibility of Jim Harbaugh because, listen, he is an eccentric guy, Rich. He is a different personality. Uh, it's not a normal operation, and he knows exactly what he wants it to look like, but he is also one at every level, going back to his University of San Diego days, to Stanford, to the 49ers, to Michigan. He knows how to win. He does have an interest in winning again in the NFL, I'm sorry to say, for uh, Michigan no, no. fans. We'll see exactly how this plays out and you know, whether or not, too, what happens on Monday might weigh into uh, his thinking about his legacy as well. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.